Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to Historical Lights Nightly Chat and Toast. Looks like everything's working. I'm trying to get a Facebook pulled up here, but uh, I hope you guys are with us. I apologize for last night. Um, got a little bit of mix of tech difficulties, and I think all of you guys out there are using so much bandwidth on the internet that uh, uh, we're having some difficulties every which way we turn. Uh, so if you didn't catch last night, we actually had to go live on the YouTube channel. Um, so if you missed everything completely, you can go over there and uh, catch the recording of that to recap. But we're happy to be back this evening. We have a wonderful guest with, uh, guest with us, uh, past Grandmaster, Most Worshipful, Bob Talbot. Thank you so much for being here, brother. Hey, good evening. Pleasure being here, being with the brothers. I've enjoyed this uh, for a few weeks now. Uh, great service you're doing. Thanks. Thank you. And uh, of course, uh, Brother Robert Marshall is on his trek from Texas all the way up to Alaska. Uh, just got word from him. He is tucked down in a snowstorm with uh, next to no signal. So he's not going to make it with us this evening. Um, but everyone out there, if you can, just keep him in your uh, thoughts as he makes this journey across our great country, um, all the way up there to Alaska. Uh, we hope he makes it safe and has an awesome time. I know he, uh, he posted earlier today on the Historical Light page, uh, some history through the areas he's traveling through, and uh, he's planning on doing that the entire way up, uh, different cities he stops in, trying to cap on some Masonic history there. So uh, take advantage of that and keep an eye on the page, and uh, Robert will bring us some great stuff, as he always does. Well, Brother Talbot, how was, uh, how was the weather out where you're at today? You're down in Wichita, correct? Uh, yeah, thanks. We're in South Central Kansas. Uh, uh, wind and storm warnings today. We had uh, 30, 40 knot gust and uh, a couple sprinkles, but that kind of blew over. But they're calling for severe weather storms through Monday morning early, uh, not only here, but I think through southeast Kansas as well. So uh, beautiful day today. I think we're going to lose it for a day or two, it looks like. Yeah, good old Kansas. Yeah, we, we had the uh, opportunity to get on the bikes today. We uh, we actually splurged and went and spent a bunch of money on new bike seats because the other ones were just hurting our back end so much. <laughs> got some padded ones to, to move forward on. <laughs> well, we've got a whole bunch of people joining in with us. Let's see who we got in here. Uh, brother Scott Mead, welcome, brother. My wife, of course, and she should be getting everything shared out, so we appreciate your efforts and all that. Got Brother uh, Cloud, Brother Fletcher, uh, most worshipful Brother Borms with us this evening. And he says to say hello to you as well. Grandmaster, great to have you on. Thanks. Let's see, we got Brother Brad Drew, uh, Brittany DeCole, Brother Boyd, Brother Sodders. Hey, Pastor Grandmaster Morrow's here with us. Brother Dave Wheatley, Gary Barber, Marvin Fletcher, my brother, Daniel Best, uh, Brother Maddox with us again. List goes on. Uh, make sure to drop us a comment in the comment section. Uh, let us know how your, uh, how your day is going on and uh, what you're doing to keep busy during this time. So, Brother Talbot, what are you toasting with this e evening, just out of curiosity? You know, I've got an old standby that um, was introduced to me about seven or eight years ago by some uh, Grand Lodge brothers. Um, it's a uh, off-the-shelf um, single malt Isla Scotch. It's Brunaheben. Uh, enjoy it very much. And I got a special glass given to me by Brother James Jack out of Scotland. So uh, uh, kind of my standard go-to, but uh, glad to share it with the brothers tonight. Fantastic. Well, my wife uh, ran to the store and got a peach bellini uh, today. So if I make a crazy face, it's because I haven't had it before. We'll, we'll see how it goes. But, but I can't remember what year uh, this glass came out, but this is the one that is uh, from our joint uh, table lodge with the Grand uh, Prince Hall Grand Lodge here in Kansas. So it's got the uh, Grand Lodge of Kansas seal on the front, the Prince Hall Grand Lodge of Kansas seal on the back. So really like that. Very nice. glass. It turned out really well. And that was a peach well, so bellini, did you say that? Peach bellini, yeah. Cool. There you go. Very good. Yeah, it, it's the sparkling, it you know, came with a pop top. We uh, did it out the back door. And uh, that thing nice. took off flying. So uh, I don't know, nice. I guess we got to finish the bottle now. <laughs> well, everybody that keeps up with these uh, Facebook lives for Historical Light, um, we're coming on during the time of quarantine to share 15 minutes with you guys each night. That's the goal to do this each night. And of course, being Historical Light, we got to share some Masonic history. So plan is 845. Some small talk with the brothers, a little bit of Masonic history, and then uh, we will do our traditional Masonic toast at 9 p.m. We welcome everyone to join in and uh, give us a share and share it with the hashtag time to toast. 
So this evening, I dug this out of the archives of Gardner Lodge. Uh, I thought this was pretty cool. So this is a uh, old booklet of the Lodge bylaws from 1887. And what I thought was so cool about this is it's an actual booklet. Now, if you see most lodges today, like ours, for example, we just uh, rewrote our bylaws two years ago, and it's a single piece of paper. You know, we down to the point exactly what we want, but this is this is a booklet. <laughs> there is, let me see, 16 written pages in this thing, and uh, it goes down to the T of exactly how people should be dressed, the color of the staffs, um, the difference in times throughout the year, because of course in these in this time period, uh, they were a moon lodge, moonlight lodge. So they were actually adjusting uh, their times from eight o'clock start time to 7.30 in different parts of the year uh, to make sure that those brothers who were riding in on horseback and stuff had the appropriate amount of light to make it safely to and from. Um, one thing I thought was really interesting in here was actually uh, the finances uh, compared to how we operate lodge today. Uh, they have a bylaw in here that says everything that comes into the lodge, 90% of it will remain into the general fund and 10% goes into the charity fund. However, the charity fund, that 10% is only allowed to be paid out um, to uh, brother master masons, widows and orphans found in necessity of the need. That's it. There's nothing else charity wise that they were permitted uh, to actually give charity to. Well, what's your thoughts on that brother Talbot? You know, um... I think charity is a great way that we get our name out in front of the public, but um, to the core, we're not a charitable, we're not a charity. We're not a charity right. organization. That's not our sole purpose. We're a fraternity of men who strive to surround ourselves with other men, make ourselves better and then take that out in the world. And I think that's where the charity comes in. So I think charity has got a key link as long as we understand. And, and I think that bylaw really speaks to it, right? It's very specific and has outlined yeah. very clear bookends where those charities should be. So uh, I, I think that's awesome. That's great. Yeah, it, it stood out to me. I, I'm kind of on that same page with you. I, I think charity is awesome. Um, but I, I think like, just like you said, we're not a charity. We do charity. Uh, how I've tried to explain it to people in the past is, you know, some people will come at it where that's the entire focus. And I feel like you know, they, they can potentially be missing out on so much that that charity should be a byproduct of the changes that we go through and not the full on intent. Um, but what I love about that is that it actually specifies your brothers, your widows and your orphans. And, you know, personally, I, I feel like in the big picture, those are the ones that kind of get forgotten about in today's age. Um, you know, unfortunately, we put so much out to a public and means, you know, school and stuff, but um, how many lodges are actually calling those brothers that don't make it and saying, hey, what's going on in your life? And not always financially. I mean, think about charity in every which way. Um, you know, how, how can I uh, how can I invest in you with my time, with my thought? Just how you doing? Uh, you need your uh, lawn mowed, anything. So I don't know. Uh, it's kind of a a mind check there, I think, for everybody to maybe examine that in your lodge and see how much are we actually doing for our brothers, our widows, and our orphans um, compared to the general community, and is that balanced out appropriately? Let's see here. Got some more brothers joining in. We've got a few minutes before we're going to transition over to our toast. We've got a whole bunch of likes and loves going on. That's awesome. Got Brother Mark Reeder saying good evening to all. Brother Maddox is toasting with some Merlot tonight. He knows how to do it well. And uh, let's see, Chauncey Boyd said, I don't even know if I can pronounce that. Glenavet 14, not sure what that is. Now we were talking uh, just the other night with, uh, well, last night we had on McClarty and I, I've already forgot, I was supposed to write that down. I'm gonna have to get with him. He was drinking one. He was highly, highly recommended. He said the name about 14 times and uh, I'm slipping on it. But we had Brother Craddock on here with uh, Pendrin and everyone's telling me I need to try that. So it, it's got that heavy on my mind, but we'll have to see. Everyone in here is given different recommendations it seems like for their favorite drink. So I don't know, we'll have to see how, uh, 
see how that goes. Brother Maddox says, excellent point. We are not a charity, but we do charity. I definitely agree with that, brother. That's, that's a great uh, synopsis to sum that up for sure. Uh, my wife says, uh, phone call or text message goes a long way. Uh, my mom would love to hear from the Masons. Yeah, I guarantee uh, we need to get some calls out to the widows, that's for sure. Awesome. Well, we appreciate everyone joining in this evening. Yeah, a whole bunch of messages popping up here. Awesome. <laughs> well, we want to remind everybody, uh, we're going to keep doing these. Uh, every night for as long as this quarantine goes on. So keep joining in with us and we will uh, be here to share some Masonic history and a toast each night. Now we've got a couple minutes here before we transition over to our toast. So uh, just do some small talk here, brother. Uh, brother Talbot, what you got planned for this coming up week? Are you uh, currently working from home or? You yeah, still thank going you. In? No, thanks, Alex. I'm uh, blessed to be able to work about anywhere I can find an internet connection, right? And I've got cell service. So uh, uh, working from home, uh, been able to do that since uh, the first week in March. So I'm um, glad to be working and, and still being able to produce for my company. And, and uh, I know there's many that are unable to work uh, uh, from home. They've got to go in and some that aren't working at all. So just blessed to be in the situation I'm in. So uh, yeah, but definitely uh, ch trying to, uh, you know, build some new routines, right? Instead of mm -hmm. waiting till this gets over and, and great, I can't wait to get back to the old routine. I think now is a great opportunity to start some new ones, right? So uh, just a little PSA for, for everyone out there. And I, I know you've heard this many times already on this show alone, uh, much less other places. Now is a great time to grab the cipher, grab the phone and talk to a brother, right? There's just yeah. no better time to get get your nose back in front of the book, whatever that means to you. Is it the floor rules? Is it the funeral lecture? Uh, so you can learn and help support your law. Just great time to do that and start some new patterns and habits. So uh, uh, I'm doing that. Um, I'm, I'm reviewing the funeral lecture that we use here in Kansas and uh, actually um, uh, working to see if we can't uh, uh, entice some brothers in Kansas to pick that up, some type of a promotion, promotional program to uh, entice some of our more sparsely um, um, populated areas where we don't have uh, uh, we don't have a lot of brothers that can do the funeral lectures. Try to get them encouraged to pick that up, yeah. and uh, hopefully that's such an that. important one. Yeah, that is absolutely. such an important one. I, you know, from just coming into masonry, um, that was one that struck my chord before any of the others. Um, just seeing, I don't know. Going in, seeing the family history I've got, seeing these different brothers building that bond, um, to me, it was just like, I've got to learn that because that's kind of that ultimate, I don't know, gift or right, whatever you can give to your brothers, even not knowing them, uh, just knowing that a brother is going to be there to do that right for you. Uh, I, I, I really think everyone needs to learn that. I mean, so bad. You, so many lodgists tend to have, you know, that one or two guys that do the funerals, um, I think, you know, just an honest challenge, every Mason should be able to do that on a drop of a hat for a brother, because you never know when it's going to be needed. Here, here. Yeah. Oh, we got a uh, brother McClarty popped on and he said that was Glenavet Enigma. That was the word that was on the tip of my tongue. Glenavet Enigma. I have to give that a whirl. Thanks so much, brother. And then uh, brother Morrow saying Glenavet number 12. Maybe I don't know if there's different versions of it. Uh, I think that's the age, 12 year, 12 year and 14 oh, year. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. That shows how much I know. <laughs> yeah, the higher the number, the higher the dollar there, Brother McClarty. Uh, that's, that's very that's true. Yeah. Pro probably not the price there. Probably not $12. Yeah, right. <laughs> probably not. Well, we're at 859. We're coming up upon the hour of 9 p.m. Uh, so sharing history is always fun on these, but obviously the, uh, the true meat of this is getting to partake in that traditional toast, uh, 9 p.m. hour with our brothers, our family, and our friends during this time. So we were gracious enough or lucky enough, I'm sorry, to have a uh, most worshipful Bob Talbot join us this evening to share some gracious words with us for a toast. I'll hand it over to you. Uh, thank you so much, brother. Uh, thank you, right worshipful brother Alex. Appreciate uh, the opportunity to be here tonight. And I appreciate what you're doing. Um, I don't believe this will be a new toast. I think I've heard at least uh, portions or remnants of this on other evenings, but I, uh, it's important to me. So I appreciate the opportunity to speak to it. And brothers, uh, for me, uh, here's to all of those that are on the front lines uh, for this pandemic that we're facing, not only the law enforcement and first responders, 
uh, all the medical, of course, but uh, also the custodial, the sanitary workers, uh, the grocery stores and restaurants that have had to change the way they do business to keep us going, uh, the pharmacies that are staying open out there for us. And uh, um, I, I need to include uh, you, Brother Alex, shows like this. It's like, here's an opportunity, seize it. And that's what I think we're all about as Masons, to all those on the front lines, brothers. All those on the front lines. Cheers. Thanks I for the opportunity. I can definitely taste the peach. That's it's not bad. I can definitely taste the peach. Fantastic words, my brother. Yeah, especially during this time, nothing more appropriate than that. Our frontline workers are, uh, man, they're just superheroes right now. In a time that's uh, so uncertain, and, uh, especially in some of these areas that are getting hit harder than most. Uh, scary, scary position to be in, but they're taking it on like champs, and we definitely Amen. appreciate every last bit of that. Let's see, before we wrap up here, I did get a note from uh, Brother Warren Hughes saying Neosho 27 has the original 1859 bylaws within their ledger book. That is fantastic. Wow. Uh, just uh, throw a little uh, shameless plug out for Lodge of Research here, since that is a Kansas Lodge. Uh, remember, we're trying to get every lodge digitized this year. Uh, so make sure, get in touch with me. Uh, we want to get a kit out to that lodge as soon as this whole... Uh, quarantine mess is over and make sure we get that history saved and preserved for years to come. So with that, most worst of time, I want to thank you so much for uh, sharing those great words with us this evening and joining us uh, for our toast. And I want to thank everybody for joining us uh, live and those that will catch us later. Um, and we will keep these going. We appreciate every last one of you. Till tomorrow, stay safe, be well, take a little time to save history. We'll see you soon. Take care. Thank you, brothers. Good night.